Hello there, I'm Joshua Cho and welcome to episode 2 of Jane Austen Airy. Today we're looking at Sense and Sensibility. Like with Pride and Prejudice, I still haven't read the book for this one. And believe me, I'll try and remedy that within the next few years. But this is me mainly looking at these films as what they are. Films. Of course, the adaptations as well, and we'll dig into that a bit as well. But mostly, I'm just reviewing them as a movie in itself. Sense and Sensibility is directed by Ang Lee, and it had been 50 years since a Jane Austen film hit the big screen. In a way, it kind of reignited an interest in Austen's work being adapted to the screen, and was really kind of the start of it all when it came to the miniseries, the TV movies, and even the theatrical movies as well. Now, the film stars Emma Thompson, you have Kate Winslet, Hugh Grant, Alan Rickman, James Fleet, Harriet Walter, Gemma Jones, Elizabeth Spriggs, and a whole heap of familiar faces, including small roles from Hugh Laurie and Tom Wilkinson. Now, Thompson actually wrote the screenplay for this, and it was actually the first script she ever wrote. And from what I know, as far as adaptations that changed the source material a bit, this is one that Jane Austen fans seem to be the most happy with. This film was made to appeal to a more modern audience, and because of that, there were lots of changes. A lot of the notes Thompson was told when she was adapting the work was to make it suit a more modern audience and their experience and of course the whole class system isn't what it used to be so what the film focused on more was about gender and sex and though it still does deal with class to a point it's not as much as the novel delves into it the film of course follows two sisters after the death of their father and because of the way the system worked back then everything their father had went to their stepbrother so they were left rather destitute and of course back in the day basically every way to success was through marriage and so to be able to live a comfortable life again they have to find it through marriage now of course this film like Pride and Prejudice is about love and the sisters each represent one word of the title, sense and sensibility. You have Emma Thompson's character who is definitely the more practical one. She knows her place and she knows what she's bound to get out of life in this current age that the film is set in. Kate Winslet, on the other hand, her character is very much about passion and feeling. And though, from what I've heard, that the characters were kind of the opposite in the book and that Emma Thompson swapped it around for the film but in a way it still kind of brings the same idea across and with film you're able to do things visually as well so Ang Lee actually made sure that most of the time Emma Thompson's character was framed by doorways while Kate Winslet's character was always near musical instruments and windows and so you kind of get that more of a freed aspect from Winslet's character while Thompson's is more contained and the whole film itself is a rather understated affair. It isn't as dramatic or as showy as, say, Pride and Prejudice. And in a way, I kind of feel that it kind of has the sensibility of the women of that time where they weren't exactly allowed to be outlandish and they weren't allowed to be outspoken. And so there's this underlying subtlety that Ang Lee did. It really does dig into gender and sex and it does make more sense for a more contemporary audience. Now, I don't like this film as much as Joe Wright's Pride and Prejudice, but I still enjoy it and respect it. And I think it's a really well-made film. The cinematography is great. The production design is fantastic. The performances from the actors are great as well. Like Pride and Prejudice, this film is very much about women and love. And so for the most part, a lot of the movie is just women. The men come into it for a bit, but then they disappear for a while. Like Hugh Grant's character, who kind of is there at the start of the film, totally gone for the middle section, and then appears again at the end. And of course, that's kind of how it was in Austen's novel. But it really does show the focus on women. Now, I don't absolutely love it. I do think it's a bit slow when it comes to pacing, but that's what's going to happen when you're adapting a novel of this size. And so in the end, I give the film four stars. It's great. It's not absolutely mind-blowing, but I think it's a really good film. And even though it's not entirely faithful, even though there were lots of things changed, in the end, it's still very much a Jane Austen affair and helps spark new interest. 
into her work which had been left alone for a while when it came to films. Now this has been the second episode of Jane Austenary. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to tune in next week for my thoughts on the next Jane Austen film.